Hey guys, hope you are doing well out there. Today we're taking a look at Adobe Incorporated, ticker symbol ADBE. We'll dive into the valuation of Adobe, take a look at their earnings release last week, uh, and take a look at their technical chart patterns, see where this one is projected to go and how it's performed over the past. If you do find this type of content valuable, please hit the like and subscribe button. It would be greatly appreciated. So taking a look at Adobe, we have a $219 billion market cap. So massive company. It's trading at a forward earnings of 30 times. So certainly not cheap, but we'll take a look at into why that is exactly. Before we get into Adobe's Q2 results uh, from last week, just wanted to share some news regarding their acquisition of Figma. So if you're not aware, Adobe late last year in September uh, made an announcement to purchase UI UX editing software Figma for $20 billion. So for a $220 billion company, a $20 billion acquisition is certainly not small. And in today's results, we'll take a look into exactly how Adobe will be trying to purchase this. So from this report, we can see that the EU will perform an antitrust review into Adobe's $20 billion acquisition of Figma and has said the deal will lead to less innovation and higher prices. And these sort of antitrust lawsuits uh, are always there. If you take a look at Microsoft's acquisition of Activision, that has been going on for some time. And these sort of lawsuits tend to draw out, they tend to cost companies like Adobe and Microsoft uh, billions of dollars in fines and monopoly lawsuits. Uh, in hiring lawyers and so this sort of 20 billion dollar acquisition will certainly take a while to get past UK antitrust, antitrust and even the US DOJ uh, is planning to file a lawsuit to block the deal altogether so this is something Adobe investors should definitely keep an eye on as this is a large acquisition by Adobe of 20 billion dollars <throat> and would take a significant amount of time to go through Taking a look at Adobe's estimates, we can come down here and check their earnings and revenue estimates for the next three years. So analysts are projecting mid double digit growth for Adobe over the next three years. As you see, earnings are expected to rise from $15.72 all the way up to $20.18, while revenue is supposed to rise from 19.3 billion all the way up to 24.3 billion and so analysts are expecting mid-teen revenue and earnings growth for adobe coming into their q2 2023 results we can take a look at their press release we break it down by segments which is nice uh, we can see digital media media segment revenue was 3.5 billion which represents 10 percent growth year over year uh, Creative revenue also grew 9% year over year, uh, and digital experience segment uh, also grew 12% year over year. So in line with estimates, these revenues are growing at mid to low double digit growth uh, on a quarterly basis. They did provide guidance and they actually raised guidance. Uh, so Adobe is projecting third quarter 2023 revenue to come in between 4.83 billion to 4.87 billion uh, and non-gap EPS to come in between 3.95 to four dollars a share uh, their full year 2023 targets revenue is expected to be between 19.25 to 19.35 billion and non-gap EPS of 15.65 to 15.75 dollars per share this is in line with Analyst estimates as analysts had projected uh, $15.72 in EPS for this upcoming year. Adobe is projecting between $15.65 to $15.75 per share. Coming down to the quarterly results, we can take a look. Adobe is just an absolutely pristine, pristine business model. Uh, this is software as a service subscription-based revenue model. We can see subscription revenue in this last quarter was at 4.5 billion, uh, up nicely well over 10% from 
from same time a year ago, which was at $4.1 billion. Overall total revenue is up nicely, up over 10%, up from $4.3 billion all the way up to $4.8 billion. Coming down to cost of revenue, we can see Adobe basically spent $572 million to generate $4.86 billion. This is just phenomenal, phenomenal margins. Just incredible to see such high margins from a company. You almost never see this from a public company. Adobe is has figured out the subscription model to a T. And you can see that from their gross profit. From $4.8 billion in top line revenue, $4.2 billion flow down to gross profit. So that is an incredible gross profit margin, close to 90%. On a six month basis, you can see this is held very nicely, uh, gross profit on a six month basis and up from 7.5 billion all the way up to 8.3 billion. Now, going down from gross profit, they do have some operating expenses. So R&D up just fractionally, uh, actually up a fair amount from seven, 738 million up to 876 million. You do like to see Adobe investing more heavily in R&D as they're incorporating AI tools into their creative cloud suite. Uh, sales and marketing up fractionally, up from 1.2 up to 1.3 billion. Uh, GNA up a little bit. Overall, operating expenses went up from 2.3 billion to 2.6 billion in this last quarter. And as you see, gross profit increased uh, by about $500 million while operating expenses increased only by 300 million. And so that difference has translated into our operating income up from 1.6 up to 1. Point, up, up from 1.5 all the way up to 1.6 billion dollars for this last quarter. Uh, on a six month basis, we see that this is steady. Uh, Adobe's operating income up from 3.1 billion all the way up to 3.2 billion. Coming down to net income, so we take this $1.6 billion operating income, we pay some interest, we pay some taxes, and get down to a net income number of $1.3 billion, up from same time last year of $1.2 billion. So net income up nicely for Adobe, uh, and you can see EPS rising from $2.50 same time last year to $2.83. Uh, you can see shares outstanding also went down, which is good to see, down from 472 million down to 458 million. This is consistent with Adobe buying back shares throughout. As the share count begins to come down, for the Adobe investor, this is a good sign because their piece of the pie is increasing as shares outstanding come down, their ownership increases. You would want management to buy back shares when they feel it's cheap, and so Adobe buying back shares uh, shows that management feels that Adobe currently um, is undervalued and management feels it's right to buy back shares. Coming down to the balance sheet, Adobe has a great balance sheet, nothing too concerning here. A cash and cash equivalent sitting at $5.4 billion for the period ended June 2nd, uh, up nicely from six months ago, which was at 4.2 billion. Uh, Short-term investments down a little bit. Uh, trade receivables down slightly. All in all, current assets up from 9 billion to 9.2 billion over the last six months. Uh, property, plant, and equipment up marginally. And all things considered, total assets up from 27.2 billion dollars to 27.8 billion dollars. Coming down to the liabilities, we can see that Adobe doesn't have a portion of current debt. Uh, current Total current liabilities sit at $8 billion, uh, down slightly from six months ago. And so if we were to look at its current ratio, we can see it's over one because total current assets at $9.2 billion. It's more than their current liabilities at eight, so current ratio is well over one, which is nice to see. Uh, in terms of their long-term liabilities, they do have some debt on the balance sheet, 3.6 billion, and total liabilities sit at 13 billion dollars. So total assets well in advance of total liabilities, which is good to see. Uh, however, you have to keep in mind Adobe is trying to push for that 
Figma acquisition, which is $20 billion. And so clearly they won't be able to fund all of that using cash alone. They'll have to tap into the debt markets, maybe issue some shares, um, which would result in dilution. Uh, and so that's certainly something to consider that the debt on Adobe's balance sheet can increase uh, if that Figma acquisition was to go through. Coming down to the statement of cash flows, we have that $1.3 billion net income figure, which we pull down from right here, $1.3 billion of net income in this last quarter. Uh, we get to add back in things like depreciation, amortization, uh, stock-based compensation, because those aren't cash figures leaving the business exactly. And so free cash flow for this last quarter comes in at $2.1 billion, up almost 10% uh, from same time last year, where it was $2 billion. Looks like they sold some short-term investments in this last quarter. Uh, they purchased some property. We can see they purchased $1 billion worth of common stock. Uh, over this last quarter, all things considered, cash and cash equivalents at the end of this last quarter sits at $5.4 billion. Moving on to the technical chart patterns, we can see uh, Adobe had this massive sell-off well, throughout 2022 as all big tech was selling off. Uh, and over the, over the past year, it's been up on a steady run. Over the last month, it has been basically on a straight line up. From a technical resistance and support level, we can see Adobe tends to uh, be rejected around the 500 to $510 level. Um, it was rejected there recently and is approaching that level again. If it does break through this level, it can get up to $570 in a hurry, in my opinion. There is a level of support down here at $440 for Adobe uh, and further lower near $390 to $400. Uh, just $400 from a psychological level, I could see uh, acting as a support level. And so, my opinion, I think while Adobe has stellar uh, statements of income, stellar revenue, uh, decent growth expected, not uh, what it used to be at north of 20%, but mid to low double-digit growth uh, is still expected from Adobe, both on the revenue and earnings side. However, it is an expensive stock uh, trading at 30 times forward earnings. And if you were if you were to believe that analyst estimates of uh, or the analyst estimates of twenty dollars and eighteen cents of EPS by fiscal year 2025, uh, and if you were to put, let's say, a twenty five dollar multiple on that, you would get a stock price of five hundred four dollars. Uh, in fiscal year 2025. Currently, Adobe is trading at 484, and so it, it depends on the earnings multiple you think Adobe should be trading at. Uh, certainly, with such high margins, it does deserve a premium. Um, however, getting up to this $500 level, a lot of future growth uh, has been priced in, and so I would personally be interested in, Ad in Adobe uh, lower down at these levels, uh, ideally under 400 is when it would start to get really interesting for me. It's always a stock I've been interested in, but have never pulled the trigger on. And so down here at 390, uh, where it was just a month ago. And so if it was to retest these levels down here, that would be an interesting position where Adobe's valuation would get a lot more compelling. And so we'll see, we'll have to keep an eye on that Figma acquisition and how it pans through. It will take quite a while to go through just because of EU and US antitrust and monopoly regulations. They tend to sort of draw these things on. That was Adobe for you guys. Overall, a strong company with strong revenues and earnings, great margins. However, it does trade a bit too expensive for my liking right now. Uh, if it was to come down south of 400, it would become a lot more compelling. Let me know what you guys think of Adobe in the comment section below. Do you think this is a buy, sell, or hold at these levels? As always, thanks so much for listening. I'll see you guys in the next video.